Hello everybody and welcome back to my learning space. Today I have another jazz piano basics video for you. I'm doing this video because um, I know that there's always a lot of people who are wanting to learn jazz piano basics but it just always seems pretty intense and I also like to make these types of beginner videos because I teach things that I wish someone had told me would have made my life much more easier. I mean the fundamental thing that you need to know in order to do jazz harmony is to know your major scales and further than that is to know and be aware of the major diatonic series which means that you should be able to play all your scales in all 12 keys but play all your scales in chords. Basically that would be Right and you should be able to do that for all 12 keys. You should also be able to tell me that okay, this is major 7 chord 1 This is minor 7 chord 2 chord 3 is minor 7 as well chord 4 is major uh, 7 Chord 5 is dominant, chord 6 is minor 7, and chord 7 is half diminished. It's like the groundwork that you just, if you don't know it, it's really going to be difficult for you. So I do have um, some videos where I did cover that. I'm not going to be doing that today. For today's video, I want to show you how to voice a jazz tune um, using root 3rd and 7th. Secondly, I will also show you how to choose tensions and i will also show you how to do some inner voice movement or like fills and frills that you can add when you're doing solo piano work um for this video i was actually thinking which song to choose because i didn't want to choose a song that was too up tempo and i didn't want to choose a ballad as well but i wanted a song that was going to do a bit of both have enough harmonic complexity to be able to teach you harmony but also a song that will engage your your rhythm when you're playing so lullaby of birdland i think was the perfect one that i had thought of of the songs that i know there are tons of versions of lullaby of birdland but my favorite one is sarah vaughan's album with clifford brown one of my favorite albums that i um, was obsessed with for a while in my undergrad um, years. A lullaby, a bird land, that's what I... So um, definitely check that one out. It's it's a good version. So um, lullaby of Birdland is in the key of A flat major. But you'll notice that it starts on F minor, which is chord six. Going back to knowing your diatonic major series and being able to play all these chords. You'll know that chord 6 is actually within the major scale. So we're starting on chord 6. And the first thing obviously you, you need to be able to do is to know the melody. And when we voice as pianists, we actually voice from the top down, which the melody is actually the guider of how you voice. So that's how you know which notes to choose and where to place them on the piano so i just want you to think when you are voicing voice from the top down i know it kind of seems like the chords come first but actually the melody comes first firstly i'd like to actually take you through the song uh, because it is important that you know how these chords are functioning within the key not just to learn chords for the sake of learning chords because that doesn't help anyone. Starts on chord six, which you had said. 
here I will say that this is a, a flat 5 diminished chord I know there's lots of ways that people can theorize chords but I'm just gonna call it flat 5 diminished here we have a G7 which goes to chord 5 of 6 this is the 5 of 6 um, this is actually just a 2 5 but the 2 typically would be half diminished right but here we have a dominant 2 it being dominant actually means that it's just 5 of 5 it's the 5 of the chord 5 which goes then to 1 here it would be chord 6 and when we go to uh, chord 2 this is actually I guess you can call it a modulation it modulates to the relative major key which is A flat major there's chord 5 then chord 1 chord 6 Of six, so we can have a two five of six, and we can have a two five of one. Okay, so now that we know how all the chords are functioning, now we want to be able to obviously voice everything. Learn the melody first, and let's start voicing. The first thing you do is root third and seventh. So here's my root note for the first chord. Here's the third. Here's the seventh. And here's the melody. Two things. Why am I putting it here? Because as a pianist, obviously you can see there's a third here. There's another seventh. There's another A flat. There's another E flat. There's another A flat. Why not just do, you know, First of all, you don't want to voice your chord tones too close to the bass note because it just sounds muddy. Also, you don't want to be too far from the melody because the gap is just too big there unless you're going to be adding other tensions of which you're not doing now. So working with what we have, root that seventh, we want to spread it out as uh, broadly as possible to kind of give a good shape to how the chord sounds like. Right, so here I'm doing a tenth in my left hand of root and third and then flat seven I'm putting here and you can see that the spacing here um, is pretty good the bass note between the bass note and the chord doesn't really matter as much because bass note functions as bass note you know it should be a bass note so and as a pianist, when you move from one chord to the next, firstly, you want to look for common notes. Secondly, moving chord tones from one chord to the next one, you want to find the closest one, um, the close, closest chord tones for the chord that you are going to. So you don't want to be jumping um, you know, different ranges on the piano. You want to find the chord tones of the next chord that are closest to the one that you're in. So... And for D half diminished, we need root third seventh and the flat five. Now, half diminished is the only time really where we would include the five, where we would need to include the five because by virtue of the fact that half diminished has a flattened five, so it naturally occurs and it gives the flat five chord its color. So we add the five in there. to voice it like this because the common note from F minor that we had in the voicing before was the A flat right the A flat is the flat 5 of D half diminished so I'm going to keep that there and then I need root 3 flat 5 was there and here's the 7 the melody is here so that's the closest that I can see I suppose you could also do I do another tenth here in my left hand. 
root third and then I take the flat five with my thumb it's actually not much different now we're going to G7 which is the five of C7 root seven three five of G7 these are the closest we already had that flat seven so we're gonna do the root here and we're gonna have the third here we have the melody again for C7 root uh, flat seven and three these are the closest chord tones which takes us to F minor and why am I not voicing F minor the same way that I did here because now we are in a different context the melody is over here right and if we're voicing melody down as I had said in the beginning um, then the melody is gonna be here then you're gonna need to find the third below that and a flat seven below that and the chord tone uh, the root note so now moving to chord uh, chord 2 of A flat major root 7 3 now we're moving to E flat 7 and you'll notice that the D flat that I had for B flat minor 7 is actually the flat 7 for E flat 7 so I can keep that and now I will need the root and the third so Here, because the melody is so far away, I'm just, I'm playing root seventh and third as we've been doing, but I'm gonna play it separately. And you can totally do that as well. You know, it's not so strict what you have to do. You can do things like play bass note first, then chord tones and so forth so you can play root third seventh root third seventh also gives a sense of rhythm if you don't want to do that then you can just shift the whole chord so I can do root three seven and melody over here but if you're gonna shift your voicings upward now you're going to have to voice the next, the few following chords, you know, in kind of like the same vicinity. In the interest of keeping good voice leading. Root, seventh, third, melody. Root, third, seventh, melody. Root, seventh, third, melody root seventh third flat five because it's a half diminish root third seventh melody so you want to find the chord tones that are close to the previous chord and use good voice leading so it's good to practice these chord tones at different points and the on the piano so don't just memorize that F minor 7 with root 3rd and 7th it can also look like this it could also look like that if you can keep that kind of vision of the different options that you have when you're playing you have all of those options at your disposal you know at whatever point the melody is at you can kind of choose different octaves or different ranges of those chord tones to create the best voice leading that you can you can practice that by comping the song just using chord tones at different points so if i can do something like these are just chord tones I'm 
just doubling them here just to kind of create a top melody you know you have a feel of the chord tones and you know how the song is moving now that we know how to voice uh, the chords how do you know which tensions to choose and a general rule of thumb is that when you choose the tensions you choose tensions that work based on the ones that are within the scale that you're in but that's not always the case especially for tensions that are over dominant chords a general rule of thumb is that for dominant chords that are resolving to a minor one flat nine and flat 13 work for dominant chords that are resolving to a major chord we can have a pure 13 and a flat nine usually works that combination usually works best um, but tensions I have learnt in my experience you kind of have to uh, play them and uh, decide for yourself what works you need to use your ear because sometimes tensions can function as part of the chord but a lot of the time they also function as a uh, voice leading and inner uh, uh, voice voices like So if I'm doing like dominant chords that are resolving to minor like the C7, you can add a flat 9 and a flat 13. So I'm going to put a flat 9 here just because it's so close by. Here's the flat 9. It wants to resolve to, right? it wants to do or this would be flat 9, sharp 9. And when I'm adding the sharp 9, I'm just putting the third here at the bottom. Right? Um, here's the flat 9 as well. is naturally in this part because the melody you can actually put the 13 as well root 7 3 13 flat 9 okay, I'm gonna put this is a tricky chord because um, the melody is on the tonic so I'm going to put root 3, here's the 7, and I'm put flat 9 in there. It's kind of giving whole tone vibes. So you can actually even put the sharp 11 in there. But again, tensions are... It's like you need to listen to jazz as much as you can. But if you can use the, those rules that I told you for dominant chords, moving to minor 1, flat 9 and flat 13 work dominant chords moving to major flat 9 with a natural 13 does the trick for major and minor chords the ninth work based um, so for instance F minor 9 you can add the ninth here Here's the voicing we had, but now I'm going to add the ninth. 
can even do a cluster here if you want. But let's leave it here. As in, it's, it's up to you. I'm also adding the ninth for the half diminished. I'm gonna do flat 13 here. Flat 13 to F minor 9. So th these things you can kind of add in between if that makes sense. for the major seven let's do sharp 11 flat 13 okay and there's so many options that you can do and as you can see that once I started using the tension started adding the tensions the inside frills and things like that kind of sort of naturally happen by themselves. Um, like this altered idea. This is, you know, used a lot in jazz. Alt, which is a flat nine to sharp nine to the five of the one chord. Oh. That's just a tension. So you want to take some of those things and practice them. Go into the B section of Lullaby of Birdland and see if you can firstly voice using root third and seventh, add tensions and add sort of melody lines and frills using tensions inside the progression. I guess when you put it all together, 